My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to remember him. And he tells us, if you remember me, I will remember you. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me, I will remember you. And be thankful and don't show ingratitude. That is the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, many times we go through difficulty and hardship. Days when we are quite sad. Days when we feel lonely. Days of anxiety. Days when we are facing uncertainty. Yes, we are human beings. We will go through those days. But we need to understand as human beings, we are taught something. How to remedy this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how to remember him and he will remember us. The verse I just read, the remembrance of Allah is such that if we were to engage in it, Allah will alleviate whatever we're going through. So my brothers and sisters, point number one, remember Allah upon all conditions. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله في كل أحيانه. The messenger, peace be upon him, used to remember Allah upon all conditions, at all times, all situations, every time. Subhanallah. So what is the remembrance of Allah? Yes, indeed. When people say dhikr, the first thing that comes to the minds of many of us is Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Praise be to Allah, glory be to Allah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Allah is the greatest. Repeating these words. Yes, that is part of the remembrance of Allah. But remember, to obey His instruction is by far more important than praising Him and disobeying Him. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. So remember this, my brothers and sisters. When you make an effort to obey Allah, you definitely will achieve a lot of contentment and happiness. You will learn something through which your level of anxiety will be reduced or eradicated. And that is to lay your trust in Allah completely. Nothing will happen except by the will of Allah. اعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بما قد كتبه الله عليك. You need to know that if the entire nation gathers in order to harm you, they will never be able to harm you at all unless Allah has written something against you. My brothers and sisters, when you obey the instruction of Allah, when you begin to understand who Allah is, when you ponder over the greatness of Allah, over the greatness of the creation of Allah, Allah gives you a comfort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a cool, calm feeling, that of contentment. You've laid your trust in Allah and you trust Allah so much that you know all your affairs will be managed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Those who believe achieve contentment of the hearts by the remembrance of Allah. And indeed it is through the remembrance of Allah that the hearts will achieve contentment and calmness. So remembrance of Allah is primarily in the obedience of Allah. Where do we find these instructions? We find them in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to read the Quran is a great dhikr. To be able to understand the Quran and work towards understanding it is a powerful dhikr. It's a great remembrance of Allah. You are remembering Allah. If I were to say, I'm remembering my friend, what would I do? I might speak to those around me about that friend. And then I will end up communicating or picking the phone up or doing something to speak to the friend. Subhanallah. And I would never do something to harm my friend. That is a very different example, but only to bring it closer to our minds. When you remember Allah, you speak about Allah to remind others about Allah. We should lead our lives in a way that when people look at us, they are reminded of Allah. Is that the case? 
Well, we can do much better, my brothers and sisters, can't we? If people look at us, they should be reminded of Allah. And we should talk about Allah in a beautiful way. We praise Allah indeed. He has blessed us with so much. Learn to look at that which Allah has given you. And understand he has taken you through challenges in the past. He has brought you out of hardship. He has taken you out of situations you never imagined you would come out of. He will do it again and again. Subhanallah. Every time you're in a situation, he is testing you to see whether you're going to rely on him, trust him, do whatever he has given you the capacity to do and then keep praising him and worshiping him, obey him and don't disobey him. And then you see what happens. So we read the Quran. We try to understand its meaning. That is a powerful remembrance of Allah. We put it into practice. That is even more powerful. What's the point of reading the Quran melodiously without practicing? What's the point of understanding the meanings of the Quran and you haven't practiced? Imagine Al Quran hujjatul laka aw alayk. إن الله لا يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقواما ويضع به آخرين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tells us that Allah will raise the status of some people through the Quran, and He will drop the status of others through the same Quran. If you look at the explanation of it, سبحان الله. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through the blessed lips of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم those who recite the Quran. Who learnt its meanings, who put it into practice and conveyed it into others, sought the forgiveness of Allah. Allah elevates their status through the Quran. And those who have learnt it but not practiced it, understood its meaning but gone against it, never bothered to practice upon it or teach it to others. Allah says, It will bear witness against you on the day of judgment. You don't want that to happen. My brothers, my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely will elevate us through his word through the quran make an effort to learn the meanings of the quran the words the understand the rules and regulations and try your best to practice upon the quran we're noticing lots of people going through suicidal thoughts going through anxiety going through so much while we extend a hand of love to those a hand of love and understanding care and goodness to those we should say part of the remedy would definitely be to improve on your recitation of the Quran, remembrance of Allah, relationship with Allah, for he is the only one who has the solutions to your weaknesses and mine, to your difficulties and mine. It is Allah who is in charge. He is in control, definitely in charge. Allah is the owner of the hearts. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik. O oh Allah, in whose hands lies the turning of the hearts, turn our hearts towards your deen, towards your obedience, your, the faith that you have revealed to us. Brothers and sisters, whenever Allah has set rules and regulations, Every single time it is in order to empower us, in order to liberate us, in order to grant us the contentment we are searching for in this world and the next. Allah has never promised you material things, but He has promised you contentment and happiness. My brothers and sisters, some of the happiest people have very little when it comes to material belongings, but they have the ownership of something that is very great, that is the relationship with Allah. And Allah is the owner of the heart. Allah will give it calmness. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, who is ever living, ever watchful, ever alive, subhanallah, the all living, the eternal, the everlasting. We seek desperate help of your mercy. We seek desperate help through your mercy, of your mercy. Aslih lana sha'nana kullaha. Make good for us all our affairs. Wala takilna ila anfusina tarfata ain. And don't leave us alone. Don't leave us to ourselves even for the blink of an eye. Subhanallah. When you make that dua, you are asking Allah to take care of all your affairs, to be with you at all times, to guide you to the best decisions in this world in such a way that you succeed in the hereafter. My brothers, my sisters, yes, many people follow the trends of this world. And these trends are sometimes leading to anxiety. 
trends of the world to expose ourselves. We need to live up to a standard of someone else and we cannot do that so we become depressed. Trends of the world to show off what you have. When you show off what you have, you will never have as much as others. So you will be led to depression and anxiety and stress and so much more. You will have sleepless nights trying to compete. When Allah says, you're not in a materialistic competition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ If you want to compete with someone, compete with them in good deeds, in helping others, in being the best person in your character, your conduct and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ When speaking about paradise, he says, those who want to compete with one another, that is what you should compete with one another for. Paradise. Subhanallah. 